What is going on people? My name is Batman and the key to victory on the battlefield is to understand the bigger picture, the direction of the battle in its entirety, the repercussions of your gunfights on all other gunfights because really the individual soldier can only do so much. That is why throughout military history the individual soldier bows to the will of a commander who commands many individual soldiers and it is the commanders that overarch the entirety of the battlefield. The strategy and tactical advancement of predetermined objectives, the light brigade, Fine soldiers, every one. Badass motherfuckers that I would not want to cross in an alley. But ultimately foiled completely by the mistake of a military leader. The decisions at the top are infinitely more significant and will always play a bigger role in determining the outcome of the violence. But in a video game, you don't have a direct superior, a military leader. You must assume the role yourself and you will not be imbued with the same power over others, but it is obviously your prime directive and only logical choice to push your team in the direction that you, from a hypothetical superior strategic standpoint, have deemed the most likely outcome of success. Now stepping into those hypothetical military leader shoes, how can we best determine through assessment of the situation what the best course of action actually is? The process requires a great many intellectual attributes and capabilities that cannot be learned in the course of one video or one match or an entire game's existence, but through many lifetimes spanning space and time and leaving their mark in little ways on small yet infinite entities, these things can be accomplished. So let us first address the ripple effect. And this is something I have talked about before, and if you remember that video, it is because you were a true old school B. Dobbins fan, and I want to take this moment to thank you for what has officially been a full year of service to the Empire. Alan Medina, Leatherwood. Certainly everyone here has heard of the butterfly effect, the notion that with changing a single event or action in time, all of history is rewritten. If it had been raining on that fateful day, JFK's sunroof wouldn't have been pulled down. He wouldn't have been shot. All of American history rewritten by the weather of a single day. Nothing empowers or frightens me more than the notion that the fate of humanity itself may very well lie in the consequences of any single trivial action we all take day in and day out. And if you can change all of human history on the turn of a motherfucking cloud, then surely you can change the outcome of a match. And this is especially true in Battlefield, because in Battlefield you can spawn on your squad mates. And because your squad mates can spawn on you, the difference between life and death and the significance of your survival is more important in this game than any other. For example, if you've ever played a conquest match that ended with a very close score, for instance you won but your tickets were in the double digits, the outcome of such a match could have been changed by a single gunfight, a single kill and death. Say you're playing on Operation Locker and the typical clusterfuck is broken out around the sea flag, but one weasley little motherfucker sneaks across the cliffside all the way to your B flag, behind the bulk of your forces. There are now two distinct and very opposite causal chains that can be put in place. The first chain involves you noticing that orange arrow on your mini-map sneaking across the flank. So you head back to B and kill that enemy. The flag is safe, your team continues on with its business and still wins by the aforementioned slim margin. However, the second and equally likely causal chain begins when you go back to defend B and that enemy kills you. His survival allows his entire squad to spawn on him. They cap the B flag, they flank your forces in the rear, hard at sea. Any of your teammates there get squeezed like a motherfucking pimple, C is capped. The enemy now has five out of six flags. Now of course throughout the course of the game you capture B back. In fact, you capture C back as well, but at that point, the enemy has put a serious dent in your tickets. And at the end of the day, when the causal chains are all said and done, when the match is over, what would have been a narrow victory for your team is now, unfortunately, a narrow victory for the enemy team. And it all turned on the outcome of that single 1v1 gunfight. In fact, the action could have been less significant than a kill. Something as simple as throwing down an ammo pack at the right time and place. If that ammo pack refills your allies XM25 airburst, who then goes on to use that airburst to eliminate a pair of stupid motherfucking snipers always camping on the fucking rooftop of D Flag Conquest on Siege of Shanghai? You know what I'm talking about. He uses that extra airburst ammo to take out their spawn beacon as well, and if he hadn't taken out those snipers, they very well could have gone on to defend that flag for a very long time, shooting through the glass 
ceilings and whatnot, continually serving as spawn points for their squads, pouring a constant stream of troops into the flag with an extreme height advantage. Your team might never have captured the D flag, and consequently wasted a good deal of time and life trying to take it in vain perhaps even providing the deciding factor between a loss and a victory. But no, victory is yours today because you refilled your teammates XM25 airburst. Every action has a reaction and that reaction obviously being its own separate action has another reaction which subsequently brings about another reaction and another and another. And oftentimes one action can bring about many reactions at the same time when there is a sort of stalemate and rush when I'm on offense and I see my team isn't gaining any ground. I'll either sneak or kamikaze pilot a venom or scout helicopter deep into enemy territory and plant a bomb. Now I know it's going to be diffused, but I plan it anticipating reactions. Multiple bad guys start turning around. They abandon their forward defensive positions to attack what they assume is a crafty and sizable enemy of force that has snuck past their defenses or stupid fucking useless teammates defenses. Often unaware, it's really only one lone and largely defenseless soldier that planted. So when those bad guys abandon their forward fortified defensive positions, suddenly it provides an opening, many openings, to my teammates who push up, who gain ground in several places at the same time, igniting their own causal chain. And they slither into some nook and cranny undetected, and even if it's just one guy who gets past the enemy forces because they backed off to defuse the bomb that I just planted, that one guy can be the straw that broke the camel's back. He spawns in four guys, suddenly there really is a sizable enemy force behind enemy lines. The fight has moved from the outside to the inside. No longer is it an uphill slog, but a true duel for the fate of two bomb sites. And one lone action has changed the dynamics of the fight from a stalemate that inevitably crushes the attacking team into a clusterfuck around the bombs that the defensive team inevitably loses control of. So when you are playing Battlefield, it is important not to judge your actions and make decisions about which actions to take based solely on the direct cause and effect, but to judge the potential future implications of each action. Think of every action you take as an investment, and follow the causal chain two or three steps into the future so that you might better understand which investments will have a higher rate of return. For one last example, the other day I was playing Conquest on Siege of Shanghai. I was in the attack chopper, I had just defeated the enemy attack chopper in an honorable duel. The enemy transport heli crashed immediately after liftoff because console pilots suck the D. Now I was faced with two options in these early stages of the match. There was a fight going on at the top of the skyscraper for C flag. Decent amount of troops from both teams slogging it out and I knew I could turn the tide of the battle if I poured down rocket fire on the motherfuckers, however at the same time the bulk of the enemy armor was advancing in unison across the bridges below. Two heavy tanks, a light tank, and an armored car. The majority of my team's armor was still capping the two flags on our side of the map, and the enemy armor was advancing very quickly. And on Shanghai, once the armor has gained entrance to that B flag courtyard area, they become much harder to kill because they're in such an enclosed area. Your helicopter does not have as much maneuvering room, and you have to fly much lower to get a proper angle on the enemy, making you a very easy and vulnerable target to enemy tank and or rocket fire. So I am faced with a choice. I can win the C flag right here, right fucking now, bro. And that is my first instinct, really, because capping the C flag is the primary objective of the game. But what are the long-term payoffs? I have to look more than one step into the future. We would have a triple cap to the enemy's double cap, thus taking the lead early on. But it will only be a small lead in a game with a thousand tickets that undoubtedly will last a while. Eventually, the enemy will return to C, and the fight I just won will simply happen again and again. The troops who were fighting on C are now free to attack other enemies' positions, of course, that is a plus, but I choose to attack the enemy armor, because upon a snap react analysis of the potential rippling of causal chains, I determined that a return on investments of time and energy in destroying the enemy armor would be tenfold that of eliminating a squad of infantry up top on C. This is for a few reasons. Primarily, the enemy armor, if it advances across both bridges, will be set up nicely to capture my team's B flag. That's the one that's underground and shit. Should they succeed in capturing that B flag, my team will be forced to dedicate time and resources to taking it back. Significant amounts of our forces will have to leave the front lines and move in the opposite direction of the enemy thus exposing their rear, and the C flag, even if capped in our favor, will be extremely vulnerable at that point, 
and it is important to remember that the C flag is a lot easier to capture than the B flag. So in the time it takes my team to route the enemy armor, defending the B flag they just capped, it is very likely that the enemy captures the C flag that I initially captured whilst allowing the enemy armor to advance in the first place. Or the enemy armor might simply bring down the skyscraper, thus rendering the capped C flag a moot point altogether. Further, if I do destroy the enemy armor, or at least damage them to the extent they cannot defeat my team's armor when it finally does push up, then subsequently my armor will be allowed to move across the bridges directly into enemy territory unhindered, very likely capturing the enemy's D flag when they get there, putting the enemy on defense, reacting to our strikes as they wait 90 seconds for their armor to respawn. And most likely it'll respawn at different intervals and will end up being deployed at scattered times in scattered places. What was a steel hulk of supreme enemy capability is now a few speed bumps on the way to unparalleled victory and justice. So as a general rule, when you're determining where your actions will serve to benefit you and your team the most, always remember that destroying a vehicle will have the largest ripple because vehicles are powerful, vehicles are often game changers, especially when they are working together in Massey. And be wary of dedicating your time to actions that will simply have no ripples. For instance, in Operation Locker, everybody loves to get in those huge clusterfuck standoffs around the sea flag, right? Where fucking 30 guys are on the side of that little tunnel and another 30 on the other side and everyone is just spamming explosives. As intense as that firefight always is, your time spent there is largely wasted because nothing you do in that firefight will ever change that firefight. You could kill a whole squad and they'll just spawn right back in on the other side because there's still a dozen other bad guys over there. You can revive and heal your team as much as you'd like and it is a great way to boost points. I once got a thousand points in one grab just from revives and healing 30 dipshits simultaneously. But it was pointless because if I didn't heal or revive, they would still be in the same exact spot at the end of the day doing the exact same shit. So there are areas where the ripples get snuffed out immediately after the first action. And there are ripples with long-term implications that change the nature of the entire match. And it's important to determine between the two if you are to succeed in consistently achieving victory. We cannot control time and space, but we can play in it. And to understand what it is, is to better understand how to play. Please remember to rate. This is Batman, signing out.